Hello friends, my name is Theo and today in this exciting super fast Mr. Media tutorial we're taking a look at how to create some simple bouncy text inside Fusion. This is something you'll use all the time in your motion graphics life. So here we go. In the edit page we'll go over to our effects library and then go down to our Fusion composition, drag one of these guys in here and we can shorten it up some just because we don't need that much space. Then hit Shift 5 to go into Fusion and we can get to work. So we've got our media out node already. We'll go ahead and drop down a text plus node with control space, text plus, wire that into our media out. Excellent, you see nothing's happening yet. We'll type in something bouncy like bouncy, and then we'll make it look bouncy. So go and do a big bouncy font and make it a big bouncy size. And there we go. Now we'll get into the important stuff. So we will right click on our style text, then go down to follower, and this will make our animation happen per character instead of the whole word bouncing each letter will bounce on which is exactly what we want for this now you see our modifiers tab is available so go ahead and click on this guy and then you see we've got it's going to be animating all of our characters from left to right and the delay type is between each character so we'll go ahead and add just a little bit of delay and i can get to making this bouncy so over in our transform tab we will go ahead and move forward about 10 frames go down to size and add a keyframe at our final size then go back to frame zero and make our start size at zero. And I can see we play this through each letters animating on. Very excellent. We maybe want a little bit less delay between characters. So we'll go ahead and dial that down now. There we go. But if we play this through, you see that's not looking very bouncy yet. That's pretty sad actually. So let's go ahead and do a little more housekeeping, bring our render range in. And now we'll add one more keyframe. So we'll go halfway in between these two keyframes because our bounce is going to be basically a periodic oscillation. And now we will make this about 1.3. Just a little bit bigger than what we're going to be. If we play this through again, see, okay, that looks a little bit less sad, but let's really make it look a lot more bouncy. And we can do that by going into our spline tab and selecting our character size here you hit Control a to select all of these and then f to smooth them out and now if we play it through well, that's looking just a little bit bouncy isn't it let's go ahead and bring our render range out some more maybe we want to slow this down just a little bit so select all of these go down to our shape box and just stretch it out some Now let's see this. Well, that's a little bit too smooth. Bring it back some. I think we just need to move that last keyframe in a bit. There we go. And now it looks a little more symmetrical on our curve here. So you see the slope going up is about the same as the slope going down. And maybe we want to make this faster again. So select all of these. Go back and bring them in some more. There we go. Now it's starting to look good. And now for the final piece of the puzzle, we'll go back to our tools page, go to our transform tab, and we'll move our pivot. So this is going to be where these are scaling from. So you see if we move the pivot down some, now they're scaling up from the bottom. If we move it to the left some, it's going from the bottom left, and now that's looking pretty bouncy. Put the final piece of this together, we'll turn motion blur on. We'll make it something like eight frames, so it actually looks nice. And then we'll play this through. It'll take a little longer to render. But now we've got some really bouncy text looking. <laughs> so remember how that looked at the beginning and how it looks now? This is something that's very sellable. You'd see on TV anytime. And now since the animation is happening per character, this can be very procedural. So if we go back to our modifiers tab and go back to our timing let's go ahead and scroll through to where animation ends there we go our last one comes down about there and let's change this from between each character to between first and last character and we'll extend this out until we get just to the end so now instead of the delay happening between each character this is for from the first to last so if we change the word our animation timing will remain the same so if you're animating this to music or a voiceover or something and something changes and you need to change the word, you can go back to tools, and instead of having to reanimate everything, you can change from bouncy to juicy. And we'll play through again, re-render this. Now it fits in the exact same space. But I think I like the bouncy version better. Just to finish this off for a thumbnail, we'll make it 
pink because pink is a bouncy color. Drop in a background. Control T to flip these, make our background white, and re render this. And there we go. Now we've got some bouncy text going. So, of course, you can use that same modifier thing for doing any sort of per character animation. So, if they're rotating on instead, or if they're sliding in, or doing whatever your little heart desires, that works for this. But I think the bouncy animation is a lot of fun, and I always like when I get to do nice bouncy MoGraph. So if you like this video, be sure to give it a like. Let me know other Fusion topics you want covered in the comments below. I'm having a lot of fun with Fusion currently. Subscribe to Meese Media YouTube channel if you want more stuff like this, because I've got a lot of more Fusion content planned. And also, if you want to help support the channel, go to MeesNewMedia.com slash products and check out stuff there. Once again, I've been Theo with Meese New Media. Have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.